Good morning and welcome to our last day of virtual learning experiences. And we are so glad that you're here. Are you excited about being here? Let me see it in the chat. Come on, let's hear it. Cause like tomorrow's the last day of school. Come on, get excited. All right, so we've got some housekeeping tips. My name is John Long and I'm with the Department of Educational Technology. I'm glad to be here with you. I'm a technology program specialist and we from the training team have been providing these experiences for you and hope that you're enjoying them. We wanna let you know that the session is being recorded. And so like if you miss part of the session and wanna go back to it, you just go back to the same link and you can watch the session or you can share it with some of your colleagues and they can view it at a later time with their classes. We'd like for you to subscribe uh, to our channel. Just down below, you can hit subscribe. And we are so, so very close to getting to 5,000 subscribers. And we would like for you to like this video too, if you wanna like it. You can hit that bell down below too, and it will notify you anytime we have any new content on our channel. Uh, over to the left-hand side is our chat window and feel free teachers to chat. Unfortunately, students can't chat at this time, but teachers, you can ask questions and we'll do our best to answer your questions. We have little moderators with blue wrenches in there uh, from uh, our team as well as from Babel Vision and they will be happy to answer your questions. And we'll answer some questions on screen during out the session as well. We'd like for you to follow us on Twitter because we tweet out a lot of our stuff. So we're actually live on Twitter right now at EdTechPBC. And there's a hashtag for us that we use for professional development. All right, so today we are very excited uh, to welcome um, some awesome people. They've uh, Paul has been with us before, but now we have his sister Jane, and they're from Fable Vision Studios and also Fable Vision Learning. And we're so excited. We were hoping to have a tour of their studios, but they're still working virtually. So they're gonna share pieces with us on how they do creativity. And that was one thing we wanted to do with you guys is to share how you can ha have a career in creativity and think creatively and use it for a good lifelong. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jane and to Paul to talk a little bit about this. And uh, I'll be back. Jane, Paul. Thank you, John. John, thank you. our dear friend John Long and team, thank you so much. We, we are so excited to connect with everybody today in Florida. I am just outside of Boston right now. And can you guess where Jane, my, Jane is my big sister, by the way. And guess I where she is. Does anybody know? Can anybody guess? I was six Jane? years old when he was born. Any of you who are six, imagine with the baby coming home from the hospital, but it wasn't just Paul, it was his twin brother, Peter, as well. So where am I? Anybody in the in the chat wanna say where I am? Nobody knows. I'm living in England, which is where our family comes from. And it's where I ran a school for many years. And now I'm working with my brothers, Peter and Paul. And it's so fun to have a company where you work with family. Maybe when you're older, you will work with one of your siblings or one of your best friends. And it makes it all the more special when you are working with people that you enjoy. So we're going to tell you about Fable Vision, and we're going to tell you about some of the things that we do within the schools around the country to encourage creativity. So we're going to talk about two things that we love that you won't always think about in terms of creativity, animation and engineering. And you're going to say, engineering is creative, but we're going to show you why it is. Oh, you're going to learn why we care about creativity. And we're, you're going to see why we think it's important to start thinking early about where you're going and what you want to do, because it's never too soon to start A, being creative, and B, having connections to what that means in the outside world. So we're going to get to see some interesting stories about that. Right. So we have been working in terms of developing tools for the classroom for creativity, and also curriculum to help you explore. And maybe you will be inspired to, maybe, and maybe you're already doing this. Maybe, do you like to draw? Do you like to write? Do you like to create stories? 
Uh, do you like to code? If you like all those things, maybe maybe one day you'll work at Fable Vision um, and you can come and visit us in Boston. Or maybe you'll even start your own company, which would be really cool. And you can invite us to see your, your studio. So uh, hopefully we can give you some help along the way and encourage you to just keep going and pursuing your creative journey. So Jane, do we have a, a little message from, I think we have a message from Peter, don't we? We do, if, if do, the mic broke, we'll play the very first video. We have a little message. My, every, Jane was saying that um, I'm a twin and my twin brother is Peter Reynolds and he does the Judy Moody books. He does the dot and, um, and we did Going Places together and a few other books. So we're we're all about stories and Peter started Fable Vision and he's going to talk a little bit about that. going to use your talent, your time, your energy to make this world a better place. Another way to say that is, what is your mission? Your mission can be small, it could be medium, it could be big, it could be really, really big. An example of a small mission might be uh, to clean up your bedroom. A uh, medium mission might be to help your town recycle more. Uh, a really big mission might be cleaning the oceans. I want you to think about what story you can write that would help other people think about your mission. And maybe they will join you in your mission. Of course, it's a lot easier when pe more people get together. So uh, I hope that that inspires you to think about how your mission uh, can be shared with your story. Why is story so important in terms of visualizing your future? Why does Peter talk about story? Is that a question you're asking people? <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you, Paul. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So story story is important. And I, I teach at Boston College, so I teach university students how to tell stories. And stories are so important because it's a way that we, we take our ideas and our experience and we share it with the world. So it's like Peter's book, Say Something, it allows you to tell the world what your story is and allows you to say something that hopefully will make the world a better place. And we, uh, we know that there are a lot of word collectors out there. This is the Spanish edition of Word Collector. Uh, the, the best place to start with storytelling is to collect lots of words. The more words you know, the further you'll go. So um, storytelling is really important. And then there are people who know how to put stories together to create animation or video and edit them together. And that's what Fable Vision does. We've been doing that for 25 years. And for the last 14 years, we've been on the top of the Boston Children's Museum, which is a really cool location. And we have been working with folks like Jim Henson Productions and PBS Kids and museums and broadcasters and publishers to help tell stories and bring stories to the world in animations and also games, mobile games and so story is really, really important. And it turns out it's actually really hard to make a story. <laughs> Has anybody had a challenge sometimes when you're trying to come up with an idea or even when you come up with the idea, it's hard to tell the story? You, that's why we say create bravely. That's one of our big sayings is create bravely because it takes a lot of courage to be creative because sometimes you think, oh, my idea isn't so good or somebody said my idea wasn't great. Do you know what? You can't listen to them. You have to believe in your ideas and then be brave enough to stay with the idea and and turn it into the story, whether it's an animation or a storybook or a novel, um, and, and then share it with the world. Be brave. So let's now also think about how important doing all that is when you're still in school and the power of a teacher to help you experience your passions and how it just might lead to your future. So we're going to have Peter tell the story of what happened to him in seventh grade and how 
fable vision is the result. So, Maestro, if you could run video number two, we'll hear Peter's story. I wrote The Dot almost two decades ago. It's a story about a little girl who is afraid to make her mark, and she has a teacher who thinks differently in more ways than one. And that teacher encourages Vashti to make her mark, and amazing things happen because of that. And I was lucky enough to say thank you to one of my teachers who changed my life uh, by dedicating the book The Dot to Mr. Matson. He was my seventh grade math teacher who dared me to make my mark. I was an incessant doodler in school, and not every teacher appreciated that and they would tell me to do it on my own time, don't draw on my class, um, pay attention and focus. And my math teacher, he noticed that I was interested in art and storytelling, and he said, um, Peter, I wanna to talk to you after class. And we had this conversation, and it was just a short conversation, but it was one of those conversations that changed my life. He said, Peter, I noticed that you love to draw and you have a great imagination, you're a storyteller. How would you like to teach math using your art and your storytelling? And uh, I went home, I looked through the textbook and I found a math concept that I could teach to another student. I created a comic book and I came in and I showed Mr. Matson and he took a look at it very quietly and then he said, Peter, do you know what you've done? I made a comic book. He said, well, it's called a comic book but it's also called a storyboard is what a filmmaker uses to, to plan out a film. Uh, how would you like to take your storyboard and turn it into an animated film? And uh, I couldn't believe this was happening. Here I am, I'm 12 years old. My math teacher is suggesting that I create an animated film based on a story that he inspired me to write. And of course I said yes. And uh, he surprised me because he said, um, actually, I don't know how to make one, uh, but something cool happened. He said, uh, let's learn together. And he went to the high school and he found a teacher, Mr. Uh, Morrow, Jim Morrow, and he came down to the junior high and he taught uh, my teacher and myself how to make an animated film. And this is back in 1973, so it was very difficult. It was a, a camera on a tripod and we, uh, had all the characters cut out. We had to move each character, take three frames, move the character, take three frames, send it off to Kodak. We had to wait three weeks for it to come back in the mail and we had to edit it together with splicing tape and we finally ran it through the projector and this film. Uh, and so at age 12, I made my very first animated film to teach. And uh, it uh, inspired me to take my art and my storytelling and to do something with it. And I discovered that animation and filmmaking was a great way to share ideas and scale messages. And uh, here I am today, my company is Fable Vision and we are an animation company uh, and now of course interactive company as well. And we make uh, interactive applications and animations and we employ over 40 artists, writers, programmers, and um, it's an amazing studio. And I have a teacher to thank for that because I can trace it right back to my math teacher who noticed me. He noticed my, my energy and talent and he connected the dots to animation and storytelling and that changed my life. That's exactly. a pretty amazing story, isn't it, Paul? It is, and it and it shows um, it shows how you can connect the dots between many things that you love, and maybe even connecting out to things that you don't know yet. Like Peter didn't even know that he would love to teach math using um, animation storytelling, but a creative teacher actually helped him connect those dots. And I, and I that's yeah, that's exciting. And so from that, um, Peter really wanted to give students today that opportunity. So 
he actually developed an animation program that is so simple anybody can get started animating, but it's also very powerful, so you can do some very cool animations with it. So we have a software package that students around the world use, and it's called Animation-ish. And I know that lots of the students in Palm Beach love using Animation-ish. And then we went on to say, how can we help teachers to develop activities and lessons that go with it? And then we said, let's create a career path, just like Peter had. Let's teach kids to be an animator, even when they're in school. And we went to the state of Florida, and we got approved for the digital tools list for Perkins. And we now have a middle school animation CTE program, and you can learn all about being an animator and how to animate. And in doing that, we touched on the shoulder a lot of our own animators because we have our our own animation studio right. as well. And so we're going to show you some of the animations, Paul, that Fable Vision has done over the years. Yeah, would you like to see the kinds of things that we do? That would be fun, right? So yeah, let's let's take a look and see some of the things that the studio does. So Maestro Maybe. number three. And one day. So you can see loads right. of styles there, weren't there, Paul? Loads of different styles, loads of different reasons for doing animation. Yeah. And lots of different skills. And I think that's the point that I would like to make, that when you saw all those different examples of things that we do at Fable Vision, it turns out there are a lot of people involved in making those things. So some people are really good at drawing. Some people are really good at animating. Some people are really good at coming up with the ideas. Some people writing. Some people just managing everything. So in a studio, it's really like a big team. And 21st century skills like communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity are what we do every day in the studio. That's what makes a studio work. So you don't have to be good at everything, but you do know, have to, you do know have to, how to communicate with somebody 
who knows how to do the animation or the coding and be able to do the critical thinking to, to get to the answer. So if That's you like good. any of that, maybe one day you could work at Fable Vision. That's a very good point, Paul. And we try and build all that into our curriculum, our CTE curriculum, and we and they and and they and the students get to play different roles, like the sound person or the storyboarder, and and learn to work as a team. And there are so many skills and types of people involved. And we're going to give you because we couldn't take you around the studio. We're going to give you a quick glimpse and say hello to some of the people who work for us and see what they have to say. Maestro number four. Hi, everybody. I'm Tone Tyne. I went to school for animation, and then I went to go work at Walt Disney Feature Animation. I worked on um, some films that you may have heard of, I worked on Lion King and Pocahontas and Hercules and Mulan, Tarzan, Toy Story, Fantasia. Right around the time that I was your age, guys, I um, had heard that a lot of the studios like Disney and places like that, they love people that draw cartoons, but they also really like to look at people that know how to draw uh, from life. And so, uh, for example, going to the zoo and drawing animals or taking a drawing class where you're drawing a bowl of fruit or the human body. And so uh, I was really allergic to the idea of that because I love to draw cartoons and I didn't like to draw the realistic stuff. But uh, when I was in about eighth grade, I took a class where I was drawing the human figures where you would have a model standing in the middle of the room and we would all have to draw that person. And it, it, te it taught me so much about the way that anatomy works and all of that. In fact, in order to be a great cartoonist, whether you're drawing you know, animals or humans or whatever, it's really important to know how it's supposed to look before you start kind of exaggerating it and making it look kind of crazy like a cartoon. So even the people that draw SpongeBob, for example, I would imagine that they all can also draw really realistic very well. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to look great, but it just you just have to have a good understanding of how um, joints fit into others and how the bones work and things like that. And one of the things I still look for when I'm bringing on artists on certain projects of mine is, do you have a voice? Like, is your artwork saying something about who you are? And can I look at your website at your work and get a real sense of the kind of work that you make? Because that might be the kind of work that I want to showcase in my project. So really kind of establishing your own style and everything about your style should be evident in your um, online portfolio or your um, artwork that you make. You know, what's gonna feel like you? Because your artwork really is an expression of who you are. Hello everybody, my name is Bob Flynn. My role at Fable Vision is I head up the art and animation team. So I'm, so I'm Fable Vision's director of art and animation. Um, I've been with the studio for 16 years now. I didn't really get into you know, any kind of course on animation until I went to college. It was really one class that I took in like multimedia motion graphics where I was introduced to the software Flash, um, which we still use, believe it or not, at Fablevision to this day. So it's really handy software. It's called Adobe Animate now, but that was really my first exposure to animation and animation software. I was in art school at the time and I was gonna be focusing mostly on like illustration, but it was the software flash that really opened my eyes to the, you know, to the idea that one person really on their own can make a cartoon. And it was a revolutionary change in technology too. At the time it used to require all sorts of heavy, you know, large metallic multi-plane cameras and things to, you know, to actually make a cartoon. And now you can just do it on your own computer. So pretty cool. One of the things that I really like about the work we do at Fablevision is we get to tell stories and help explain things in a funny and meaningful way. So the fun thing about working on games is you get to play with your creation. So I've actually developed a few avatar builders now where like once I'm done designing all the characters and working with the animators, you actually get to design, you know, your like your little avatar character and see it in the game world, which is really cool. But for me, creativity is all about play. And when I think about play, it has to do with like improvising and 
kind of making things up on the fly and thinking about, um, you know, all sorts of different ways that you can solve a problem creatively um, and, and like efficiently. And we have to do that a lot because, you know, oftentimes we don't have much time to get something done or there may not be like, like a ton of money in the budget. And so we have to think, to think outside the box in terms of how, you know, how you're going to get, you know, how you're going to get like a three minute animated film done in a few weeks. And so, um, I think sometimes when people hear the word play, they think it means that you're not working hard or you're not trying hard, you're just goofing around. But play for me is like when I get into a zone of just trying things out, experimenting, um, and thinking about how you can get something done in a way that everybody enjoys working on it, you know, and you also get it done on time. So that's how I use creativity at my job at Fablish. We are what we call a mission-based company, meaning that the stuff that we make, we want to make sure that what we're putting out into the world is something that's going to be positive. It's going to have a helpful impact on the world. So we tend to take on jobs and clients that are about things like, um, yes, very educational, um, but more than just um, how to become a better math student or how to you know, improve your um, history knowledge. It's more about things like how can, um, you know, how can we help kids um, figure out what their talents are? How can we figure out um, how to empower kids to feel good about themselves, to know that no matter, um, you know, where they come from, what their backgrounds are, um, that they have the potential to be anything that they want to be. So that's the kind of stuff that we like to make. Um, so you'll notice that when we talk about our projects, a lot of them have that kind of a, um, you know, sort of a theme to them. Uh, at one point, we got contacted by the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Mm -hmm. You guys have probably heard of them. And they uh, like to grant wishes to kids specifically who have some serious illnesses. And there was a little girl who was 11 years old who was sick with cancer. And she had always dreamed about being an animation director. And she had this story that she was interested in Fable Vision helping her to turn into an animated film. And uh, we worked really closely with her. Her name is Nashama Ryman. And we made this really beautiful film. It's called The Clums. And I think you can find it actually, um, you can probably find it on Fable Vision's site. There might be a link to it. And if not, definitely on YouTube, if you type in The Clums, K-L-U-M-Z. Um, but Nashama uh, worked really closely with us, wrote the story, and it's her voice that you hear. Uh, and the story is hers. It's something that she thought of when she was growing up in her house. So uh, that was a really, really great project. And by the way, Nishama is very healthy right now. She's super happy, healthy, and growing up and um, cancer-free. So. So those are just a few of the, the folks who work at, at Fable Vision. And you can see a lot of different kinds of skills and talents <clears throat> yeah but everybody believes similar thing that the work that we do should have a positive impact on the world so that's that's what makes fable vision um maybe a little bit different than other other studios so paul one of the other things that we have in terms of software to schools is our engineering software that elementary and middle school students use to learn design mm -hmm and fabrication. And we right. wanted to give students that same experience that we developed for the animators by mm -hmm. creating how you become an engineer. And we have Shirlanda right. in our chat that she wants to be an engineer. That makes us so happy. And I, I, I'm showing the Create Bravely sign again because in engineering, you really have to be brave because when you, when you engineer something and you're trying to invent something, a lot of times it doesn't work, right? So you have to be very persistent and you have to be resilient because sometimes it's discouraging. So we have to say, be, be brave, and, but it's tons and tons of fun. I call it hard fun. So Jane, did you? So, so we're, going to, we're just gonna give you a glimpse. So, so we, um, we went out and we worked with the National Academy of Engineering to create a curriculum that can be, we've got some that can be used in elementary and, and then we've got the CTE program for middle school. And we will give you a glimpse. So we teach you 
all about the engineering design process and we introduce you to engineering and i and we're going to play you a video this is our last video all about what it takes to be an engineer and i want you to listen carefully because some of the skills that these prop these engineers talk about are the same thing that bob flynn just said about being an animator Pro the whole problem solving and thinking differently. Those are the creativity skills, aren't they, Paul? Absolutely, and that's that's why we love STEAM so much, right? STEM skills plus the arts, creativity, because that's where original ideas happen. That's where innovation happens and invention happens because exactly. you're good thinkers. Right, so. I mean, we don't want an engineer to be trained only to be able to make, you know, exactly the device that exists now. We want right. someone to be thinking, you know, that's one kind of engineer who just takes what's there and rebuilds it and rebuilds it. We want right. you to be able to think about that's, all that's the things. That's the message going places, right? You can go above and beyond because you you think new ideas and work together with people to to build these things. So, um, right. so that's what we're excited about: engineering, design, and fabrication. And so, take a look at some of the elements from our course and away with our last video, Maestro. Hi, from all of us at Fable Vision Learning. We're here today to talk about one of our favorite topics, engineering. You can think of engineers as people who solve problems. An engineer is someone who identifies an unmet need or a challenge that people are facing. They design or make something to solve technical problems, especially using math or science. Britannica.com tells us that the words engineer and ingenious are derived from the same Latin root, ingenerare, which means to create. As we will see, engineering and ingenuity are closely linked. Engineering has evolved into an amazing interconnected web of fields and disciplines that affect our daily lives. The roads we travel, the bridges we cross, the water systems that supply hydroelectric power and bring irrigation to our crops, these were brought to us by engineers these emerging types of engineers are envisioning bold new ways that we can use science and math to make people happier and healthier. What problems of today and tomorrow do you want to solve? Will you help to bring clean, safe water to families in remote geographic locations? Will you envision ways to build our electronics out of materials that are biodegradable? Will you develop clothing that protects us from the sun, mosquitoes, and ticks? Will you make it possible to colonize faraway planets or come up with brilliant new ways to protect the resources we have here on Earth? Through these many types of engineering and the many fields that are still evolving today, we can't wait to see what you'll create. takes is problem solving. I think if you are a natural problem solver, you, you like to do things like jigsaw puzzles. When you see those puzzles with all the twisted wires or things, you look at it and you want to take it apart and it's interesting and it's fun and you stick out it longer than maybe some other people might. You have to have technical skills. So you do have to have a background in math and science. And math should not be a scary thing. Math is all about logic, step by step. So if you think about what I do in testing, testing is a step by step process to prove that that process is going the way it should be going. Well, if you can't think logically, um, then testing is going to be very difficult. During 
logical thinking skills and being able to kind of break apart a problem and um, say, okay, if this is what the input is, this is what the output is, these are all the different various factors that can go into it. Let's take it apart one by one, isolate it, and figure out where the problem is coming from. I came to this career because I liked math and science, but I wasn't good at all math. So I wouldn't say that you have to have all the skills that an engineer might need. You only need to have a passion for science and math. And then the skills that you don't have, you can learn. Critical thinking. Um, it is very important for an engineer to understand the underlying details of a, of a project that they're trying to lead or of a problem that they're trying to solve. You have to be curious. Curiosity is a huge thing with engineering. You need to be able to really look at a problem from all different angles, ask all sorts of questions. Why is this like this? Why is this being done? Why um, are we having this result? Creativity is also a very important characteristic of, uh, of engineers because a lot of times we are challenged with being innovative. I think having patience while you're doing that is also key. You need a lot of patience because the one thing I think that I found out once I um, went from school into my internship is I didn't realize how long it takes to engineer. Because, you know, in school, you sit there for an hour in a class, you might take a test or whatever. It takes you, you know, an hour to solve three problems or whatever it is. But when you get out there in the real world, you'll work on one project for a year sometimes because it's just so many small little aspects of it. Depending on the kind of engineer you want to be, it takes a number of different technical skill sets. But from where I sit as somebody who manages engineers and manages teams of engineers, I would say the most important thing as an engineer is a very strong sense of ethics. Engineers, many times when they finish their degree and when they become a professional engineer, they take a type of oath where they're swearing to use their skills and their knowledge in a way that is helpful, not harmful. As you can imagine, to build a bridge, to build a wind turbine, to design a transmission line, anything like that, the stakes are pretty high if they get it wrong. So to be a really good engineer, you have to be really thoughtful and careful and ethical about the way you use your knowledge to make sure that it's used in a way that's for the best. And one other thing is initiative. Sometimes you have to learn that new skill to get this one thing done. Definitely organization is a great skill to have. You need to be okay with not knowing everything, but willing to put in the research and the work to figuring out a possible solution. The other thing that I believe is key is teamwork, the ability to work in a team. Understanding and be able to collaborate with a lot of people. To be a materials and process engineer, you need to have the type of personality that works well in groups. People who are willing to ask questions, who are willing to work together, who are really willing to listen to differing ideas and perspectives in order to create something wonderful together. Actually, when I started working at NASA, part of our training was to go through what's called the stone tablets of flight control. And um, part of that are these characteristics that they describe as being really important for flight controllers to hone in order to be a contributive member towards this you know, critical team. So there's seven characteristics and I'll list them off for you real quick. It's responsibility, discipline, teamwork, confidence, competence, toughness, and vigilance. And I think really, if you think about those characteristics, that's what you need to have to be an engineer. Of course, the academics are important, but you really need to have all these characteristics and, and try to strive to hone them and work on them as much as you can. Um, because that is really what's going to make you successful in your academic career and then eventually your engineering career. Isn't that cool? I just love, I love hearing from real engineers and giving practical advice about wh what does it take to be an engineer? And it's kind of cool because we heard a lot of the same things as Jane was pointing out that we heard from the Fable Vision Studios team. So communication and collaboration, working as a team. And I, I love that idea that, that really it's all about, it's problem solving, right? And being okay with not knowing things, 
because it's just unsolved yet. And that's why, you know, our book, uh, book series, Sydney and Simon, um, the twins get together and try and solve problems. They love problems. Some people hate problems. Sydney and Simon love problems because they use their creativity and their STEM skills to, to solve the problems. So if you have the best friend who also likes uh, science or engineering, uh, STEM, STEM um, you, can, you can collaborate and maybe invent something together. Okay, so we have a few questions for you we wanna ask. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, how long does it take to be an engineer? Do you know? I think it depends upon what level of engineering. Because you can have an associate's degree to get started in engineering. My nephew here in England didn't go to university. He went straight to an engineering company that does robotics and they paid for him to go one day a week. And in five years, you know, so he was really an engineer from day one, but he got his training on the job and now has his degree. There are engineering schools you can go to. So um, there are always different ways to go at it. And, right. Uh, um, but, uh, right. So there's some 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 levels that just take a few years and then, then to, to get mastery, you, you 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 do put in some years. But. Um, it depends on what field you want to go into as far as engineer. So we've got yeah. another quick question about how long does it take to make an animation film? Ah, that's a good one. Right. So that's, that is, um, is a good question. And it, it sort of depends, right? How long is the video? Are you going to do a short film or a really long film? A really long film, like a big Pixar film, can take years and hundreds of people at Fable Vision, we specialize in very short films, and those short films that you might have seen um, and you can see on our on our websites probably take about um, maybe two or three months to do, to come up with the idea, to animate. Then we have to put the sound in and the music in and edit it all together. So, so it takes it's shorter, but it still takes time. So you have to be patient. But on the other hand using the the modern software of animation ish in your classroom you can start making little animations now you can make little public service announcements and and do it within you know five weeks of a a classroom session mm -hmm. to get right. started but and I, yeah i bet you with animation ish you could probably do it in a day yeah. I, I i'm going to guess that there's students out there who could probably jump onto the program come up with the idea animate and quickly put some music and voice in and, and, you know, a short, a short piece you could do very, very quickly. And if Peter was here, Peter feels very strongly that if you really think about what your message is that you want to get across, you can do it in three frames of an animation. So we have a whole load of examples that Peter's done called, uh, that are three frame animations. So a frame is an image in animation and you repeat lots of images to make an animation, he says you can tell a story in three of them. All right, here's another question for you. What books have you been a part of that have been in your favorite or the most memorable? Uh, so books that I've been a part of. So things that I've done, um, you know, I collaborate, I collaborate, communicate with my twin brother, Peter. And right. I would say um, going places is my favorite because it actually started as an animated film. So we started it as an animated film called Above and Beyond. And then the publisher saw the animated film and they said, we love that story. Can you turn it into a book? And so you'll notice if you watch the film called Above and Beyond and look, read the book, which we renamed Going Places, um, you'll see that some things are the same and some things are different. And so it's, it's one of my favorite books because it really captures that idea of trying to go be above and beyond the things that you know to go to the places you don't know and invent new things. So, so that's, and that's my captures, captures 21st century skills, doesn't it, Paul? Collaboration, communication, creativity, and okay. critical, critical thinking. thinking. Yeah. <laughs> All in one book. All right. So I think this is more for our engineers. So I don't know if we can answer this, but DeAndrea wants to know what kind of engineering do you do? So I think this is more specific to the certain engineers. Yes, right. but we, do, we were asked, we were approached by a university, University of Virginia, to create the engineering program. So we actually 
invented software called FabMaker Studio that actually helps students and teachers engineer. So to come up with the ideas, you can design it on the computer and then you can print them out as physical objects. So we actually have become um, engineers because we were pulled into that project and, and we love designing and making things on FabMaker. We can make houses or cars or buildings, uh, machines, catapults. It's pretty cool. I bet you a lot of you, without knowing about it, are already engineers. Because even like when you're making a cake, that's all of the same skills that engineers use, actually. You know, putting everything together and using chemistry to make something. Right. Well, we really want to thank you guys for being here today, Jane and Paul. We're going to like do a few announcements, but we're going to bring you back up to kind of wrap things up in a few, uh, about a minute or so. But cool. I've got a few announcements that I'm going to kind of close things out with. So uh, everyone out there, this, is, this has been a great experience for us. We want to talk about, we have another session coming up in a very few minutes from our Palm Beach County Library partners, and we're very excited to have them. So they're going to be sharing a lot of different information with us, and we're actually already over here and ready to kick that off. So we're like moving quickly today. And uh, we will have a couple of things we want to mark your calendar on teachers. We're going to have a back to school tech talk that's focusing on digital citizenship on July 29th. It's the week before preschool. We know that you don't want to think about anything now except summer, which I don't blame you. I'm ready for summer vacation as well. Uh, but just put that on your calendar because we're going to be focusing on how to get your students to be more of a digital citizenship, how to protect their Chromebooks and all those kinds of things. We've got lots of surprises and surprise guests coming. We don't want to talk about too much, but just mark your calendar. All right. For the next thing, we're very excited to bring our tis, our Tech, district Technology Conference with the, this year's theme is Fast Forward, A Decade of Change in a Year. And in what a year it's been, right? October 15th is the day. It's going to be completely virtual. We're going to have everything that we normally have and even more. So you want to mark your calendars for that. So that's coming up in the fall. So we've got a lot of things going up in the fall once we get back into school mode. All right, uh, for everybody on our training team, as well as the whole entire ed tech team, it's been our pleasure to bring these to you. We've got lots of things we're planning for next year, and we really hope that you'll keep on joining us. And I just wanna turn it back over to uh, Jane and Paul to say some last words to wrap things up for today. Awesome, thank you, John. And thank you to the ed tech team. We work with schools all across the country. And I have to say Palm Beach is our favorite because you you guys make things so easy. You make it look so easy. So thank you. We know it's a lot of hard work putting programs together like this and you always have fun. And that makes us happy because when you can put the joy in the learning, that's that that's really what uh, keeps, keeps the fuel going. So Jane, that's I don't know if you had any last thoughts. That's absolutely right. In fact, Florida was one of the last places I went before we had to stop all of our traveling. And I was down in Palm Beach meeting with some of the teachers there. And absolutely, we are always amazed at the Palm Beach teachers because we see teachers from all around the world, in fact. And we think the Palm Beach teachers are just tops. Yeah, very, very creative. So we hope... We hope we, when we all get to travel again, we can come and visit you in person. And if uh, you're able to come to Boston, come visit us at Fable Vision. We also own a bookstore. We love books so much that we opened up our own bookstore uh, 19 years ago called The Blue Bunny. And it's just outside of Boston. So if you're ever visiting in Boston, maybe looking at colleges or visiting friends or relatives or on vacation, come visit us at The Blue Bunny. And I, we promise you, you will get a, a free prize when you come in. And you uh, can also me. come visit in England. We love visitors. And if you, if you just want to know where to go visiting in England, just let me know. I'm a good tour guide. She really is. She really I'm is. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for joining us. And everybody stick around. We've got another one in a few minutes. Awesome. Thank you, John. Thank you to all the teachers and librarians and the students. It was a crazy year. You did it. We are, we are cheering you on. Yay! <laughs>